Hey everyone, so I'm going to discuss the most common power issues that people seem to have on motorhomes. So we'll start outside here at the power point. Up. Normally you have a tab here that covers the front. So what you want to do is you want to pull that up. Slot that tab into there. So s slot that piece. This one's broken but you get the idea. And then you just push it in and make sure it's firm and secure. Then when you come to your power box with your lead, plug that in. Make sure this tab goes here. It locks in, it locks the plug in. And also make sure your circuit breakers are facing up on the power box. Stepping inside here now, we're in a six berth motorhome, but the design of the electrical system is nearly identical on all of the motorhomes, so from the three berth, the four berth, and similar. So if we come down here, you just have to locate where your isolator switches. So it's here on this model, just there. So always locate that isolator switch or the 240 volt outlet, the points, and then you'll find your main RCD over there. Lift up that box there, and then that gives you access to the circuit breaker or the RCD. If it's in the off position, you're not going to have any power. So always make sure it's up, so it's in the on position. If you have a microwave fitted in your vehicle, the first thing that will come on is that. You'll see that that's the easiest and most obvious thing. The second thing that will switch on, and you'll hear a light humming noise from the fan, is the battery charger. So if I come underneath the seat here, it's normally always located underneath the seats. Just over there, we've got that battery charger. So that will be the first thing also that comes on. You won't know that because it's normally under the vehicle. So it's hidden away underneath some cabinetry or something similar. And if anyone needs to know, that's normally where your charge controller is mounted. And that's where your fuses are in case you have any issues and you want to address your 12 volt system. So that's where all of that is over there. This is the VSR, it's called a voltage sensing relay. When the alternator starts charging the chassis battery, only when it reaches above a certain level, then it will switch over and allow the charging to continue on to the house battery. So the start battery must be fully charged before the house battery gets charged. And this is the little device that controls that system. Next to this, you can see the little projector box. This is called a low voltage disconnect unit. And I'll cover this a bit later on in more detail. The easy way to tell when you're plugged in is just look at the voltmeter and just see it should be charging. You should see it in the green here. Now we are in a Kia Breeze, so this is a 4 berth motorhome, and you'll see that the control panel is over there at the top. And if we come to the front over here, notice again the red isolator switch. To Basically what that red isolator switch is, it, when you turn that off, it kills the power to the house area, so it'll stop electricity or current flowing into any of the low voltage circuits. And if we come down here, that's your main RCD with your circuit breakers on this model. And notice that off is always down, on is always up. Just over there like so. And this model has the charger underneath the seat as well. If you wanted to see that, you just have to pull the seat up. It's just clipped in there and there. It clips in here. And then that gives you access underneath there. Well, your fuses and your charger are underneath the seat over there and this is where your diesel heater is located so if I go ahead and remove that that's where you notice and that's where your house battery is located as well at the back now we've stepped into a three berth Kia Nomad this one has carbon monoxide monitor that's located here at the seat as you have seen in the previous clip you have the same red isolator switch and the circuit breakers which when they're up in the up position they are on and the two black sockets are your 12 volt cigarette lighter outputs normally on these Kia Nomads and most of them most of the new ones you have one 12 volt DC socket there 
it's a cigarette light lighter type socket and you have two USBs to charge it over there again we've got the projector battery charger the AGM battery your fuses are located here and your solar charge controller now we're in a six bit horizon and if we come down here at the bottom just over there is that isolator switch but if you notice there's no circuit breakers because the circuit breakers are located under the seat which I'll show you now so once you lift up the squab and you come underneath here that's where you find that circuit breaker and it's just located underneath there so in case anyone gets stuck so that's where that's located just under there with the solar charge controller as well so on this camper here you can see we're plugged in we're coming inside now if you forget that the vehicle's plugged in into power and if I go and try and put it on ignition watch what happens so you basically get a warning buzzer and that red light illuminates this is just to warn you that it's still plugged into power so that's just to warn you that it's still plugged into power and you've forgotten to unplug it so that's just a safety measure so if you ever hear that that's what that's from so you've forgotten to disconnect the power from the 240 volt um, outlet so when you plug it into power if you come back here and if you've still got a voltmeter fitted which all the models did you can see that this one is charging well ignore that this is up here sometimes some of these voltmeters can play up and the calibration gets disturbed because it's just a needle so this one really shouldn't be right up there at the 15 15 volts it'll but it should sit somewhere around the 14 14.2 or between about 13.7 to about 14.2 so just keep that in mind so as soon as you plug it in you should see that jump up and that'll indicate that the charger is working well also when you start the vehicle that's when it'll also jump up and when the sun is out with the solar charge controller and the solar panel on the top that's also when it'll be in the green zone and it'll show you that it's charging with lead acid batteries you don't want to drop it below 12 volts i'll put up a chart now of the minimum voltage a voltage corresponds to the state of charge so you should see that now so just keep that in mind that's very important so once you drop any lead acid chemistry battery whether it be an agm gel below 50 percent you're effectively damaging this the battery even though it's a deep cycle type battery you don't want to drop it below 50 percent on a lead based battery lithium is fine you can drop it up to about 20 percent safely but you will drop the charge cycles significantly of the battery if you do discharge it every time below 50 percent as per the voltage in the chart as i mentioned earlier in the video i would explain about the low voltage disconnect so here's a good example if i bring you in if you read that it's disconnected at the moment so when that red light is on that means the load is disconnected so how the system works it protects the house battery i'll put up a wiring diagram now and you'll see that So effectively, the load, so your water pump, your fridge, your all your 12 volt circuits um, goes into this little unit here. And then this goes to the battery. There's jumpers at the back, which you'll see now. So you select the correct voltage that you want to set for your particular application, whether it's a NICAD, gel, AGM, or just a standard lead acid deep cycle battery. You set that on the back of this unit so we're up here at the gauge if that voltage drops below the your set point for example we'll just say 12 volts if it drops below 12 immediately it'll cut off like you've seen here so that's cut off at the moment and there's no voltage none of the circuits will work over here so if, for example if i turn any of this on you can see nothing is coming on at all it's all dead so this is a perfect example so i'll show you how to reset that now the reason why they put this in is because it prevents the house battery from being excessively drained which will extend its life so that's the main reason why they're fitted so if coming back here now what we want to do is if you're ever in this scenario as you've seen we'll just push this button over here so normally you can just push the button here and then it should reset if the battery voltage is back up 
otherwise once the battery voltage goes above the set point it will automatically engage again so it's a fully automatic unit on this um, low voltage disconnect projector box sometimes you can come here turn this off turn the load off that will essentially turn that off as well and you can reset it that way as well so now i'll show you you can see it's reset and now that's back up again to 12.2 so if you push the reset button sometimes and if that doesn't work just turn the isolator switch and that will effectively reset the whole system and as you can see here now if I turn on the lights I'll just show you that the lights turn on if I turn on the water pump don't know if you can hear that but that's running so we'll just turn everything on And I'll turn the fridge on now as well. And as you can see, the fridge was left on. So hence the reason why it pulled the voltage down oh, at, at night. That's why that low voltage is going to kick, kick in. That's quite low at the moment, even though it's on the green. It's not ideal. Now, as you can see, I put all the circuits on. And you just saw that trip over there. And now it's tripped over here. So that's a prime example on how you might encounter this issue. So now if you're wondering, you might come to your vehicle or you might wake up one morning and suddenly see that the voltage has dropped like that. Notice how all the circuits were on. So we'll turn all, everything off again. Come back to the fridge. And we'll just turn it all the way down. Realistically, it should be between about three and four. Even in summer, that's more than adequate. Again, we're here at the low voltage disconnect, which has cut off the battery. And as you can see, it's turned off here. So again, come to the front, make sure all your loads are off. I'll try and show you both at the same time. So I'll come here to the isolator switch, turn it off, turn it back on. And the voltage is above 12 so it won't cut off again and now that means if your voltage is down there you want to charge it immediately so start the engine or plug your camper into a campsite and that would start charging the battery again so like i said remember you make sure your battery is fully charged before you use any of the circuits or check your fridge that might be on and that might be the reason why your battery is getting drained without you realizing Especially if you look on a day like this when it's raining and when there's no sun the solar panel is not going to be charging the Auxiliary battery or the house battery. So just keep that in mind as well Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this video was of some help to you and I hope you solved your issues if you have been experiencing the similar problem See you everyone